Number five, the Blair Witch Project. I remember seeing this when I was like 10, and I'm not gonna lie, it kind of scared the shit out of me. It still does. It tripped me out, because like back then my parents were like, oh, don't worry, honey, this is made up after like every scary movie we watched. But this time they were like, was that real? You know, my dad just sat there quiet thinking. I, I, I was scared. Because the whole production apparently did such an amazing job from top to tail of its release, making the audience still feel like it really happened. The Blair Witch Project is probably the most famous found footage movie ever made. The campaign tactic was that the viewers were told through missing persons posters and that the characters were missing while researching in the woods for this mythical Blair Witch. Their IMDb page even listed the actors as missing and presumed deceased in the first year of the film's release. Even the film's website contained actors posing as investigators giving testimonies about their evidence. They even shared childhood photos of the three leads to add a sense of realism. By August 1999, the website had received 160 million hits and the movie went from a flop at midnight to the top worldwide. During screenings, the filmmakers made advertising efforts to promote the events in the film as factual, including the distribution of flyers at all of the film festivals such as Sundance and Cons, asking viewers to come forward with any information about the missing students. All the actors making their feature film debuts as well were described as missing and presumed dead. The actors' parents even started receiving condolence calls and sympathy letters. The actors got to witness the movie blow up but they weren't even invited to the screenings due to the publicity. Imagine not being able to go see your own premiere or even really celebrate your huge role in this huge successful movie. It's kind of sad for the actors, don't you think? I think it is. Number four, The Bay. Of course, if you like what we do here on Top 5 Scary, throw us a thumbs up down below or comment which one of these real-ish movies scared you the most. The Bay is a 2012 American mockumentary horror film directed by Barry Levinson and written by Michael Wallach. The movie's basically about a small town getting infected with a contaminated water source that two oceanographers discovered in the bay without saying anything. After investigating fish being eaten from the inside out, they realize that the culprit is this tongue-eating louse creature that looks like the bugs from like Starship Troopers. Yeah, really scary. The movie came out as a result of a documentary Levinson was asked to produce about real problems facing the Chesapeake Bay. Although Levinson chose to abandon the documentary upon learning that it was already being covered by a huge news network organization, Levinson instead decided to use all that research to produce this horror film, which he hoped would shed light on the issues facing Chesapeake Bay. As such, when promoting the film, he noted that more than 80% of the film is real and actually factual information. Also, 80% is so real that it had to wait to be released and cleared first. Uh, what? Yeah, this was like a real issue, hence the confusion around the found footage. Apparently this nuclear disaster monster giant isopod in the bay aren't real, but the small isopods filmed are very real. You see a tight shot of the isopod, Levinson said. That's not CGI, that's real. We just pulled that out of the Atlantic Ocean. The isopods do this really gruesome thing, which the bay does a great example of, is that they eat the fish from inside out. All that stuff is actually factual. A leaking nuclear reactor actually does have a runoff heading towards the Chesapeake Bay. Its quantities aren't great, but the fact that it's actually happening seems scary enough. The chicken farm runoff stuff is actually factual too. At the end of the day, yes, it's a movie, not a documentary, but it's infused with a lot of things that are really real. I think it adds to the nature of the piece, end quote. Hey, spoken like a true artist. And that's why the film has gotten so many great reviews. Give it a watch, very spooky, very well done. Number three, the Poughkeepsie Tapes. Writer-director fam jam duo John Eric and Drew Dowdle are best known for their sinister yet impeccable found footage movies. Yeah, it's pretty gory and actually had to wait 10 years before being released due to the graphic footage on it. It's rumored that it was held for 10 years due to its contents and disturbing atmosphere, referring to it as a banned movie. It's likely that MGM felt audiences weren't really ready to see such graphic contents. In an abandoned house in Poughkeepsie, New York, murder investigators uncover hundreds of tapes showing decades of a deranged killer's work. And in an all too realistic found footage mockumentary, the moments showing the killer POV are things of nightmares. I'm not gonna lie, this is like the goriest movie on our list today. But with scary movies, sometimes comes a little gore, you know? The Poughkeepsie Tapes plays out as a faux documentary following the discovery of a very large collection of VHS tapes created by said deranged psychopath and the investigations that follow. The documentary is well shot and played out in a believable manner. 
Sometimes the acting is a little, yeah, this is really fake. And then sometimes it's like, okay, I'm gonna look up if that guy's a real cop. The feel of this movie is gore, gore, gore. If you're into like Saw type stuff and multiple victims and lots of popcorn syrup, this one's definitely for you. These tapes are only fictional, but there's a small catch. According to Marist College, the Poughkeepsie tapes may be based on an actual event. A killer named Kendall Francois killed eight to 10 people in Poughkeepsie in the late 90s, but didn't videotape the murders. There's heavy debate in the film industry on which movies are depicting actual cases similar to actual reports and acts that are totally staged and made up. Number two, The Quiet Ones. The Quiet Ones is a 2014 British supernatural horror film directed by John Pogue based on a very real 1972 parapsychology experience called The Philip Experiment conducted in Toronto. It stars Jared Harris as a UFT professor attempting to prove that poltergeists are actually real manifestations of the human psyche and not actually supernatural beings. The movie is very scary, no doubt about it. Jared Harris is amazing, as always, but the real story behind it is actually way more terrifying. The professors of mathematics, science, and psychology created a fictitious character through an attempt to communicate with said fictitious entity through a controlled seance. It was the real deal. The character created and agreed upon was named Philip during the test. His fictional backstory coincided with real historic events and places, but with multiple contradictions and errors. They said he was born in 1624 in England, had an early military career, knighted by 16, in the English Civil War, and eventually dying at the age of 30. The group was seated around a table via a lecture, with initial seances yielding no contact, no communication, and no phenomenon. The professors then dimmed the lights, fully leaned into the seance, changing the environment. Participants and students then began feeling a presence. Lots of table vibrations, breezes, unexplained voices, and sounds which matched responses to Philip's life. Audio and video and witness accounts documented the paranormal event, but Philip never actually appeared. Yo, this actually happened, like, like down the street from us. This is terrifying. And number one, Ghost Watch 1992. First broadcast on BBC One Halloween Night 1992. Written by Stephen Volk and directed by Leslie Manning, the drama was produced for an actual BBC anthology series. Despite having been recorded only weeks in advance, the narrative was presented as a live television broadcast. During and following its first and only UK television broadcast, the show resulted in an estimated 1 million separate phone calls to the BBC that night dealing with a mixture of complaints and praise for the program's bizarre release. Yeah, Ghostwatch has never been repeated on UK television. It's been replayed on stations such as the Canadian channel Scream for Halloween once in 2004, and the Belgian channel Canvas in 2008. The hour and a half event was shot documentary style and appeared as part of the BBC. It involved actual BBC reporters performing a live on-air investigation of a so-called haunted house in London in which demonic poltergeists activity was taking place. Through found footage and interviews with family living there, they discovered the existence of a violent ghost nicknamed Pipes. A nickname from their kids. Footage actually showed the police arriving at Fox Hill Drive and the spirit even dragged a BBC host behind a door. Yeah, that is horrifying. Imagine watching your weekly hosts on like a reliable television network that's censored and archived and then all of a sudden the host just gets yanked up the wall by a supposed demon live on TV. Number five, Phoenix Forgotten. Phoenix Forgotten is a 2017 American found footage sci-fi horror directed by Justin Barber in his directorial debut and written by him and T.S. Nolan. Produced by Ridley Scott, THE Ridley Scott, the film tells the story of the disappearance of three teenagers who set out to find the source of a widely reported 1997 UFO phenomenon known famously as, you guessed it, the Phoenix Lights. We all remember this, don't we? Okay, now the plot. Sophie Bishop and her boyfriend visit Sophie's parents' place in Phoenix, Arizona on the 20th anniversary of her brother's disappearance. In 1997, the family all witnessed the Phoenix lights during Sophie's sixth birthday, which was, drum roll please, recorded. Several strange lights appear in a formation over the city before being chased by fighter jets. The family is convinced that they have witnessed UFOs via the old recordings and Sophie now begins to dig a little bit deeper. In the tapes, Sophie's brother Josh begins investigating the Phoenix lights with the help of his friends Ashley and Mark. Sophie interviews multiple parties regarding the trio's disappearance and the sightings in 97, only to find the group's abandoned car and a camera and one single tape. Sophie views the tape, 
obviously, showing the beginning of the group's epic journey to find out what caused the Phoenix Lights. We then see what eventually ensues of the poor trio in a horror movie about aliens. Yeah, shocker, right? Or who knows? Maybe it has a happy ending. I like this movie a lot for obvious reasons, but it's like really fun, and I like the dated feel with the tapes, you know? As always, dudes, if you like what we do here at Top 5 Scary, throw us a thumbs up down below or even leave us a comment, you know? Number four, Antrim. Antrim is supposed to be the deadliest movie ever made, and that's what it claims. It's like a fever dream, this movie. Again, not real, but supposedly real. You know, it's a movie. Antrim is proudly a 2018 Canadian horror film. Woo! Go Canada. Written and directed by David Amito and Michael Lacini, the film is divided into two parts, an opening and a closing narrative in the form of a mockumentary and a feature film. The mockumentary loosely tells the story of Antrim, a movie released in the late 70s that supposedly had effects on those who watched it. The bulk of the movie then is just kind of moment to moment what kind of happened. Antrim was developed by Emido and Lacini during the development of a separate project in which they were brainstorming scenarios that scared them. Their central idea would later become the basis of Antrim. This idea and concept of what it would be like to watch a supposed quote real cursed film. The filmmakers felt like it would make a great horror film which it does. For the film's occult aspects, the writers studied multiple historical depictions of demons and the devil. It stars Nicole Tompkins and child actor Rowan Smith. Antrim made its world premiere at the Brooklyn Horror Film Festival in October 2018 and was nominated for several awards festival to festival. Uncorked Entertainment acquired North American distribution rights, releasing it on video on demand and pretty well all streaming services since like 2019. It received great reviews who praised its uncomfortable atmosphere, its uncomfortable acting and creativity. Yeah, they kind of nailed it with this one. It's so 70s. Like, it feels like, again, a fever night terror. Number three, As Above, So Below. As Above, So Below is a 2014 American horror film written and directed by John Eric Dowdle and co-written by his brother Drew. The title refers to the popular paraphrase of the second verse of the Emerald Tablet. The film is presented to the audience as found footage following a documentary's crew's experience exploring the catacombs of Paris. The film is produced by Legendary Pictures and distributed by Universal. The film received negative reviews from critics but grossed more than 40 million with a huge profit from only a 5 mil budget. The plot. Scarlett Marlowe is a scholar continuing her past father's research for the Philosopher's Stone. Scarlett travels to Paris with two friends and using codes from her research, they solve a riddle leading them with coordinates to the catacombs of Paris. They sneak underground and the group wanders the caves. They encounter cultists, ghosts, visions, you name it. They find a Templar, Assassin's Creed looking tomb and see and read some pretty jarring stuff. Statues in the walls come to life and it goes all Indiana Jones but like scary scary. The car scene? Like, yeah, what's that about? That's horrifying and downright disturbing. Dude, this movie is gonna leave you gasping for air, literally. But I really liked this movie. It's shot GoPro style, and I love that humid, dingy cave stuff. Look one way in the dark and then the other way. Yeah, I'm just sweating thinking about that scene. Number two, The Taking of Deborah Logan. It's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. I'm not gonna lie. This movie is horrifying. If you're down for like old witchy ghost lady vibes on a Friday night and you like jump scares, we got a winner folks. A 2014 gem. This American found footage supernatural horror film is a first for the director Adam Robidoux, who co-wrote the screenplay. Set in Virginia, it tells the story of a documentary crew making a film about Alzheimer's patients who uncover something sinister while documenting one woman. The film was released right around Halloween time, and you can still catch this on like every streaming service. A team of students who want to create a documentary about Deborah Logan, an elderly woman who has Alzheimer's, films and records her daily life. Then Deb starts to act a little bizarre. They notice that her actions defy normal explanations and express something a little bit more supernatural. Things escalate after they record an audio of Deborah talking about sacrifices and snakes. Oh yeah, like real witchy old lady vibes, I'm telling you. After some talk about an ancient ritual that makes people immortal, some dark cultist kind of stuff, and voila, Deb goes on a spree and tries to kidnap them all. They find out that she has quite the sinister history and that maybe she's not a really good fit for the star of a documentary, more like the star of an exorcism. Ah! 
Yeah, like that kind of stuff, you know? GoPro, night visions, old lady witchy standing in dark corners, good old fashioned thrillers, you know? Good for the whole family, right before bedtime, in the dark. And the number one spot, of course, is The Visit. This movie's kind of like the last movie, with all the witchy vibes, but like, way more subtle and way more terrifying. Yeah, I don't like when there's like creepy shit just running around in the background shots, right? Like, that's what scares me the most, the background shots. The Visit is a 2015 American found footage comedy horror film written, produced, and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. The film centers around two young siblings, teenager Becca and her kid brother Tyler, who live with their mother, who's had a pretty gruesome past herself. After finding their grandchildren online and wanting to meet them, the kids' grandparents invite them to spend a week at their farmhouse. Aw, how nice. Like a little Hansel and Gretel type stuff. Exactly! The film was released by Universal Pictures and it grossed about 100 million worldwide against only a 5 mil production budget, so yeah, this one killed it. Good job, guys. But it got mixed reviews, though. I don't really know why. This movie's like really, really scary and well done. The plot. The kiddies are getting ready for a five-day overnighter at the grandparents while their mother, Loretta, goes on a cruise as a much-needed break. Loretta reveals that she has not spoken to her parents for like... 15 years. The teens plan to record a documentary film about their visit using a camcorder. It's shot kind of GoPro style with some classic camera falls on the floor, what's in the background type fun. I'm not going to spoil anything in this movie, but if you like screaming things, crawling around all in the middle of the night, yeah, then this movie's definitely worth a watch. Number five, Incantation. Apparently right now, it's the ranking for the most watched non-English horror film worldwide with over 10 million hours watching and rising. That's pretty sick right there, starting off, you know? Obviously, I couldn't leave this one off the list with a reputation like that. So here we go. Incantation is a 2022 Taiwanese found footage supernatural horror film directed by Kevin Ko and co-written by Kevin and Chang Shi Wei. Released in Taiwan March 18th, 2022, it became the highest grossing Taiwanese horror film ever made. Yeah, it's received international distribution from Netflix. Hey, hey Netflix, so good. Since July 8th, 2022. Here's the plot. A woman named Lee Ronan narrates the film, imploring the audience to memorize an insignia and chant an incantation to bless them and lift a curse on her six-year-old daughter Dodo. The insignia and incantation are interspersed frequently throughout the film to encourage the viewer to pray along with it. Yeah, it's it's pretty horrifying. Ronan, her boyfriend Dom, and Dom's cousin Yuan break a religious taboo while documenting a ritual for their internet channel. They go to a remote village of Dom and Yuan's relatives who practice a religion worshipping an ancestral deity called Mother Buddha. The clan asks the three to submit their names with the incantation to Mother Buddha. And here we go. That night, the group spy on the clan performing a ritual where a young girl seems to be willingly prepared for sacrifice. The girl, whose body is covered completely head to toe in runes, was left in front of a tunnel, which the clan said is forbidden. Ronan waits for the girl while Dom and Yuan enter the tunnel. Uh oh. Yeah, that's not good. Yuan later emerges screaming and Dawn seemingly lifeless. Ronan and Dodo's house soon becomes infested by unexplained ghostly activities and Dodo is disturbed by a shadowy presence. They bring her to a shrine where a priest agrees to exorcise Dodo. Yunin later becomes possessed and sends copies of the tunnel footage. That's horrifying. Yeah. Just Chuck Liddelling yourself on a computer desk. Yeah, you're definitely gonna need a uh, Tylenol after that one. Ouch. The film ends with some audience participation, and I'm not gonna spoil anything, don't worry, but after watching this, I kinda understand why it's rated what it's rated. Yeah, very scary but also really good. As always, dudes, if you like what we do here too, hit the like button or leave us a comment down below. Which 2022 horror film has you hiding behind the covers? Number four, Horror in High Desert. Horror in High Desert is a 2021 American film written, produced, and directed by Dutch Marriott in a pseudo-documentary format featuring found footage elements about the mysterious disappearance of a hiker in Nevada. An experienced outdoorsman vanishes in North Nevada while on an outdoor excursion. On the three year anniversary of his disappearance, his friends and loved ones recall the events leading up to the disappearance and for the first time speak about what they think actually happened. The first part focuses on the police report of hiker Gary Hinge. Toward the end of July 2017, Gary hiked to an unspecified area in the Mojave Desert and the police conduct a search based on the last GPS of location on Gary's cell phone. As time goes by, the media stop reporting and a private investigator named Bill is asked to investigate so that the case would not be abandoned. The investigation then focuses on clues in the last of the published videos. Gary appears in frame from his home, narrating a very unusual experience 
experience. The footage found reveals that Gary was able to find his way back to some mystery cabin. There he hears chanting that seems to be human like and he eventually is attacked and the camera stops recording. Reporter and the private investigator speculate that who or what might have attacked the hiker. It is mentioned that the police have made this footage public in the hope that someone in the audience might offer some additional clues which spark a series of theories such as Area 51, atomic testing, satanic rituals, and of course, extraterrestrials. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely horrifying. I didn't even see that thing. They really do a good job at involving the audience in the experience by asking them to help continue the search, which makes the film seem so real, but not real at the same time, you know? Hey, great film. And I say aliens, that was definitely an alien. You know, I'm the alien guy, I'm just saying. Number three, Dashcam. Dashcam is a 2021 computer screen horror film directed by Rob Savage and written by Gemma Hurley, Jed Shepard, and Savage. The entire film is shot from the perspective of the main character's handheld iPhone or the dashcam in her car as she live streams her actions for viewers whose comments are displayed. Kinda hard to read and watch at the same time, but it really makes it scarier, trust me. The film, of course, is produced by Blumhouse Productions, so you know it's gonna slap. Dashcam premiered at the 2021 Toronto International Film Festival in September 2021, where it was named second runner-up for the People's Choice Award. The plot, Annie Hardy is a right-wing internet personality who live streams from her car, making music and using her viewers' comments as lyrics. Tired of COVID-19 restrictions and homelessness in Los Angeles, Annie books a flight to London. There, she pays a visit to her former bandmate, Stretch, who now works as a delivery driver. When she arrives at the restaurant, Annie is surprised to find it abandoned before she encounters the owner who offers Annie huge money to apparently transport an old woman, Angela, to an undisclosed location. Annie accepts the offer, of course, and drives with Angela while live streaming everything to her fans. And this is where it gets terrifying. Angela then vanishes into a nearby forest and the group find her standing atop of a tree to which Angela just floats down to the ground before attacking the group, showing them her supernatural abilities. Angela hunts them down, and after a terrifying scene that I'm not gonna spoil, a humanoidish creature emerges out of Angela, where it now hunts for Annie. Okay, you can, you can answer this lady's gonna just take you to some friends, okay? Nope. Yeah, I would be saying a big nope, too. Hell no, I'm not driving some scary old lady in the middle of the night. That's like rookie horror film nonsense right there. Great movie though, great movie. Very scary. Number two, Spree. Spree is a 2020 American comedy horror film directed by Eugene Kotlyarenko. The gonzo style satire follows a social media obsessed rideshare driver played by Joe Keery, who we all love. In an attempt to become viral, he live streams himself murdering his passengers. Ooh, it's a challenge of a role I'd say. The film also stars David Arquette, Kyle Mooney, and Misha Barton. It was executively produced by Drake. That's saying something right there. Spree premiered in 2020 at the 2020 Sundance Film Festival and was released theatrically on video on demand in 2020. The film received mixed reviews, though critics praised Curie's performance and the film's premise. I really like this movie. I think it's a good representation of 2020 culture, you know? With phones in our hand every second, everybody trying to go viral, doing anything you can for clout. This movie does just that. Okay. Here's the plot. A young man named Kurt is obsessed with being a social media star and becoming viral. Kurt finds work as a driver for a rideshare app called Spree, then fits out his car with cameras and begins a new live stream titled The Lesson, where he instructs viewers on how to become famous on social media. Kurt starts picking up passengers one by one and killing them off with poison that he politely offers riders, as well as a bunch of creative clout chasing performance heinous acts. Uh, you'll see. Kurt is then stopped by two police officers who grow suspicious of him. It's revealed that Kurt's murders have already become public, with Kurt being nicknamed the Rideshare Killer. After police are unable to identify him, Kurt tries to flee, but he too is pursued by police, forcing him to crash his car through a homeless camp. With Kurt's murders becoming more well known online, Spree is temporarily shut down to allow an investigation to take place. Kurt tries to kill Jesse, the other character, but she pins him to the wall with her car and then in turn, takes his phone and continues the social media presence which he started. Jesse then becomes a nationwide star after taking credit for Kurt's demise and capture surrounding the infamous rideshare killer. Yeah, I really like this movie. It's like super campy and over the top. It's serious at times, but also very gory. Joe Keery kills it with this role and I feel like if you were needing a break from that Stranger Things character, 
Yeah, we found it. You did very well, my friend. Very terrifying. And coming in at the number one spot, VHS 94. VHS 94 is a 2021 American found footage horror anthology film and the fourth installment in the VHS series. If you haven't seen these movies, they're great. Give them a shot. They're almost shot like a bunch of stories from the same era in one film. Like little mini true or false found footage movies that make the audience ask, is this campy or did this really happen? The film originates from a screenplay written by David Bruckner and Brad Miska. The overarching plot follows a police SWAT team who stumble upon a sinister cult compound and its collection of VHS tapes and what's on them. Following the series cult origins around film festivals, VHS 94 has its world premiere at Fantastic Fest on September 26, 2021 and was also screened at the Beyond Fest on October 4th the same year. The film was released as a Shudder original film via Shudder, October 6, 2021, and later that month, Shudder announced that it had become the platform's biggest movie premiere in its history, with record-breaking viewership numbers. That's awesome. Horror movies? Let's go. It's great stuff. These films are awesome. Okay, here's some plots. A SWAT team gets a tip and investigates a prison cell-like haunted house with various static screens playing different found footage. The first is a Channel 6 news reporter, Holly Marciano, and her cameraman, Jeff. They are filming a story about the Rat Man, a local legend who has supposedly been living in the town's storm drains. After interviewing several citizens who have reportedly witnessed the creature to gain information, the duo descend into the storm drain where they find several homeless encampments. Well, I'll do it again. Where they find several homeless encampments. While filming, they are approached by a man covered in black goop slime, and he murmurs, Ratma. They attempt to flee, but they are captured by other similar residents of the sewers. Yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything else because I really like the VHS series and the mini stories that they do. They're absolutely terrifying. The vampire part is the scariest part. I'm not spoiling anything. Check it out.